we're going to be showing you how you can make a wound packing prop for teaching bleeding control or practicing yourself on wound packing techniques. This prop cost us less than $20 and we're going to go step by step and show you how to make it. We've been experimenting with some DIY bleeding control props to try to bring the price down on some wound packing props. And we came up with one that actually turned out pretty good. But before we get into that, if this is your first time to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and make sure your notifications are on so you're alerted when we post any future videos. And if you find this video helpful, give us a like, that would really help us out. And if you have any questions regarding any of the stuff we go over today or any questions in general, feel free to leave us a comment below. We love hearing from people. In our quest for making training more accessible and cheaper and coming up with some other ways to be able to produce training props, we started digging into silicone and making our own props. So I am not a silicone expert. There's a lot of different types and variations of silicone out there, but I did find a two-part silicone that comes liquid. You pour it together, you mix it, you can create a mold, and we will give you more information on that later in the video where you can get all the supplies for this. But we are gonna take you step by step and show you where to acquire the supplies and then how to make your own silicone bleeding control or wound packing props. Let's run through all the items you're gonna need for this. So first off, you're gonna need a two-part silicone. We First off, we have a two-part silicone. We got this from Let's Resin. They have supplies for making silicone molds and a bunch of stuff, but the silicone itself is uh, two-part, mix it together, stir it, great stuff. It's the only one we've tried, but it worked really well, so why not? Um, it's one of the better options out there as far as price goes too, wasn't too crazy. I think we paid 30 to $35 for this set. You can get two props this size, out of it. Next, we're gonna need a Tupperware container or a bowl of some form. If you get a bowl that slants out, it's gonna take a lot more silicone to actually fill that area up. And the silicone is not super cheap, so I would try to stick with something that has straight sides. It's pretty compact. And the perk to using a Tupperware container is when you're done, you can slap a lid on it, stack them up, keep them in a training box, um, and then when you wanna use it, pop the lid off. Or when you get done, you can pop the silicone out of here and then use that separately. Next, you're gonna need some sort of wound positive. Now, you can experiment with things around the house. You can um, find just about anything. We have done one of these with a pair of rolled up gloves. We took gloves, we taped it to a pencil, dipped it down in there, then we pulled it out, and it left us a nice wound. We've also made some 3D objects um, that are shaped like wounds. And we have several different styles of those. Those are available on our website and we've put a link to those down below as well. So you can go download those for free. If you have a 3D printer, you can use those design files and print one. If not, you could ask a buddy that has a 3D printer or you could just find something else around the house, cram it down in there and use that for your positive. Then we're gonna have to get a little bit creative on how we're gonna suspend this in there. So um, on our wounds, we have a hole through there so you can slide something like a pencil or a wire through there and then hang it over the top. Um, if you're using your own positive, then you may have to take this, get creative, tape it on there, but you wanna suspend it in the middle so it doesn't fall over. And then I would also recommend taping along the sides as well so it doesn't rotate or fall over or shift and it just helps hold it in place. So that's it. We have silicone, we have a Tupperware container, we have our positive for our wound which could be improvised or you could 3D print something from our website. And then a pencil, a wire, a pin, something to suspend this and then a little bit of tape to hold everything in place. So let's go ahead and mix the silicone up and we will pour it in and make our wound packing prop. Okay, so we have a two part silicone, part A, part B. We're gonna go ahead and pour each one of these into our bowl. Now we have part B. We're gonna take part B and pour it in as well. Okay, so we want equal parts of both the part A and the part B. We're gonna mix those together. We're gonna stir it for five minutes. And they also claim that majority of the bubbles will come out um, on their own without having to put it in a vacuum chamber. It's not a real big deal if there's bubbles in there, but the ones we've done in the past, they actually have turned out pretty good with very minimal bubbles in them. Once that is completely mixed together and you've let it sit for a little while to get some of the bubbles out, I'm gonna take my Tupperware container. So last but not least, I'll use a little bit of tape and we'll secure this in place. 
And there we have it. So I'm gonna take this over and set it out of the way so it can start curing. I've got that one set over out of the way so it is undisturbed. The manufacturer's recommendation is to let that sit for at least 12 hours. Now it depends on how thick your mold is. I let ours sit for at least 24 hours and then popped it out to make sure we didn't have any issues. Once it is totally set up and it is fully cured, you can take your mold out of the middle and you are left with the silicone inside the Tupperware. Now, a couple extra things that you can add. If you want, you can run IV tubing or some sort of tubing down to the bottom before you pour this, and that allows you to then be able to use this tubing to push blood or something else down inside this. Um, so you'd wanna do that before you poured this. Um, and if you did that, you might wanna leave some space on the top to be able to coil that tubing up, snap a lid on it so any blood or liquid or anything from training stays inside, it's nice and clean. For me, I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it out. So break the seal around the edge, and then you should be able to start working this out. You don't wanna damage the side, but you might be able to use a pencil or a tool or something to help push this out as well. Just make sure you don't dig into the side and damage it. So there we have it. So there is our mold, pretty solid. And we've used these in training and they have held up pretty well. So pretty impressed with the quality we can get out of such an economical training prop. Another idea on this is you can actually put two different wounds on the same mold. So if you wanted to put them side by side, you could have two different types of wounds to practice wound packing on all within the same mold. You could even do bigger molds. So the possibilities are endless. It just depends on how much silicone you want to use on each one of your wound packing props. Well, that's it, folks. Pretty simple process. Hope this video was helpful and hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do to make some training props so that you can teach bleeding control and practice yourself. We've tried to make this as easy as possible, so all the links are down below. So you can find silicone, you can find the 3D models for our printed positives um, if that is helpful for you. If not, get creative and just make something work. If you make one of these, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to know how it went and if you had any problems or encountered any issues or if you have any ideas to make this even better. So leave us a comment below if you make one. Let us know how it turned out. That's all I have. As always, stay vigilant and stay safe.